everybody. Welcome to Hot and Rich, a show about celebrities. I'm your host, Kate Raft. It's the second episode. We are here. We made it through the first episode. I'm back again. Hey, everybody in the chat. How you doing? Shout out to the chat. I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for being here. I see all your little messages. I'm reading along as the show goes. Um, you may have noticed if you're watching visually that I have refreshed the pink dye in my hair and also I cut my own bangs. Okay. Quarantine hero over here. I'm, I'm a one woman salon. I'm killing it. I'm killing the hair, the hair game today. You know, I'm proud of myself and I'm not afraid to say that I'm brave and a genius. Okay. Wow, I have to stop. I have to stop. I've done one episode and now my ego is out of control. Um, <laughs> um, but yes, shout out to the chat. I love you all. Shout out to everyone who's listening to this as a podcast. I will do my best to try and describe all of the visuals to you. You're not going to miss out on a damn thing. And hey, while you're listening to the podcast version, leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. It helps the show you know it does I'm not even joking it's it's not a joke it's serious um and also shout out if you're watching this on YouTube it probably means you're my dad my dad watches this show on YouTube and so do my little brothers hey Rex and Roland oh my god what am I doing <laughs> Okay, this is Hot Seconds. This is the part of the show where I do some topics that I don't want to talk that much about. Let's just go there for like a hot second, okay? Also, the show's called Hot and Rich, so it's clever. You know, it's fun. We're having fun. All right, great. Um, okay, first of all, this first topic for hot seconds is breaking news okay I don't have a ton of info pulled from this because it literally just broke like an hour ago but Mary Kate Olsen announced that she's getting divorced from her husband Pierre Olivier Sarkozy you know like Nicholas Sarkozy's brother <laughs> um it's it sounds like it's a it's a really messy situation I love when we get news about the Olsen twins because first of all I'm a child of the 90s love the Olsen twins okay I ride and die for them I wish I could be one of the cigarettes that they smoke I want to be a cigarette in Mary Kate Olsen's mouth if I ever die I want to be reincarnated as like Mary Kate Olsen's like trash her cigarette butt trash anyway um <laughs> they're getting divorced it's it sounds really crazy but apparently he's trying to kick her out of the apartment they live in and she doesn't want to leave and like the only way that she can like keep the apartment is if she files for a divorce so she's filed for divorce I don't have a ton more info but I'm praying that this story develops and we can do like a deep deep dive on it on Friday because how often do you get news about the Olsen twins like it's truly a special thing to get celebrity news about the Olsen twins they're so private I think the last time I read about the Olsen twins in the celebrity news cycle was when they left a birthday video for Ashley Benson, <laughs> which was great. You should all be Googling that after the show. Um, yeah. So it's uh, it's drama. It's drama over there with with Olivier and Mary Kate. So stay tuned. OK. Our first official hot topic is Khloe Kardashian. She's not pregnant with Tristan's baby. Uh, if you didn't know, there were some rumors going around this morning that Khloe was pregnant. But Kris Jenner, I mean, <laughs> anonymous source, texted TMZ and said that Khloe's womb is as barren as Kim Kardashian's fridge that she uses to hold three different kinds of milk. There's the fridge. It's mostly empty. If you're listening to the podcast... That was a joke that I punctuated with a picture of Kim Kardashian's fridge. Doesn't really work as a podcast joke, I guess. But hey, that's fine. I'm, it's Jokes are great when you explain them. That's what I always say. Uh, okay, so Chloe did like a tweet storm about this and said that people need to stop talking about her uterus and blah, 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 blah. I'm not going to read all the tweets, but <laughs> here they are up on the screen. Anyway, Chloe's not pregnant. Um, I do have 
kind of a conspiracy theory about this whole thing if you want to go on this ride with me for a second. (laughs) This is all allegedly, but I kind of wonder if this is all an inside job. Like, I wonder if the Kardashians leaked this pregnancy rumor and, like, denial just to, like, dominate the news cycle for a second and distract from the fact that Tristan has, like, some shady news going on that has nothing to do with Chloe. Apparently, Tristan allegedly had to take a paternity test because he allegedly got some other woman pregnant who's not Chloe, and that does not fit in with, like, the current Kardashian narrative where she is quarantining with him and they're like I trying to fall back in love or get back together I think um I think that's where their storyline is going so but apparently he might have gotten this other woman pregnant um it's like not really being written about maybe because it's like trying to be a hush hush thing I, I have no idea I don't know how legit it is but I do have this website who's claiming to have the receipts about all of this Jack show the receipts really quick Okay, so like these, this is from some website called Gossip of the City. Um, I'll link it in the show notes if you're listening to the podcast version of the show. But it's like all of these like legal documents that are saying Tristan had to take a paternity test or something. It's a lot. It's a lot. Anyway, th- so my theory is that that maybe they like started the pregnancy rumor to distract from this. I have no, nothing to back any of this up. I have nothing to back any of this up, but it wouldn't be the first time that Tristan Thompson has like gotten a woman pregnant and been like kind of like weird about it. That's all I'll say. Okay, let's move on to our next hot second. Okay, this is about Sophie Turner. She's pregnant with Joe Jonas's baby, which you all knew that already, right? <laughs> um. Anyway, we got we got a baby bump photo. We have it. We have a baby bump photo. Here's a photo. It's Joe Jonas and Sophie Turner doing one of their paparazzi walks. They're in front of a hedge and she's sporting a little baby bump. She's a mother of a New Jersey dragon. Is that the right character from Game of Thrones? I don't watch that show. Actually, I did watch it, but I like checked my phone the whole time because it was boring. Okay. <laughs> um, my my next hot second for the day is about uh, Lena Waithe and Cynthia Erivo. Okay, so they've been rumored to be a thing, like a couple, um, but it hasn't really been confirmed. But now they're getting caught quarantining together. So people are saying, oh, they, they're a thing. They're a couple. The reason this is interesting is that Lena Waithe like just got divorced from her wife and they were only married for like two months. And a lot of people think that the reason for their sudden split after just two months of being together has to do with Lena cheating on her wife, allegedly with Cynthia Revo. So now they're now they're quarantining together. Do with that info what you will. Some people are asking, who are these people in the chat? Well, Lena Waithe, she's um a writer, like a, a she created like the the Chai and some other shows. She wrote for Aziz Ansari's show Master of None and I think she won an Emmy or something for it. Um she wore that she she wore the big rainbow flag at the catholic themed uh met gala i believe anyway cynthia rivo was um in that harriet tubman movie that was just doing the oscars rounds okay anyway our next hot second is <laughs> so good i'm obsessed with this Okay, I don't know if any of you guys watch Shaws of Sunset, but I love that show so much. I've been currently binging it. And apparently, Nima, 
who is like one of the people on Shaws of Sunset, said that he's friends with Meghan Markle and they like went to high school together. So he was on this podcast called Reality Life with Kate Casey. And he said, and I quote, we were at a party one time and she sat on my lap. She got nose to nose with me. For a 16 year old guy, that is an emotional moment. She said to me in Farsi, you are so beautiful. I asked her, how do you know Farsi? She said, I learned it for you. Then she walked away. End quote. I mean, that is like literally out of a teen movie. I want this to be real so bad. Meghan Markle learned how to say you are so beautiful in Farsi to hook up or like not hook up, flirt with Nima from Shaws of Sunset. Like she is a duchess. She's the duchess of learning Farsi to flirt with a high school boy. I, I love this. I love it so much. I wonder if she watches Shaws of Sunset. I, I wouldn't be surprised if she does. Like, I want to know what she thinks of Nima's veneers. Put that picture back up. Look at his teeth. They're so white. They're so white. There is a thing as teeth that are too white. And sorry, Nima. They're just, they're very white. They're very white. And I want to know what, what she thinks of the teeth. I do. All right. Okay, now it's time for our reoccurring segment of the show called Are Zach Braff and Florence Pugh Still Together? All right, yes, they are. They're still together. I have no reason to believe that they broke up since Monday, so. <clears throat> yeah. Okay, so this is actually like kind of heartbreaking news. I'm not like really ready for this, but sometimes life hits you fast. And Ashley Benson, even though she and Cara Delevingne broke up last week, Ashley Benson's already moving on. That's right. Our favorite queer sex bench loving queens ended their love. And it really like shook me to my core. So it does devastate me to report that Ashley Benson has a new boo. Um, she was spotted grocery shopping with G Easy. You know, G Easy. He's like a white rapper guy. Um, shout out to Hearted Kara on Twitter, which I'm assuming is a Stan account. They posted this paparazzi shot of G Easy and Ashley Benson at the grocery store. I just want to like sidebar for a second and say that Stan accounts are the backbone of the quarantine celebrity news cycle. And I am eternally grateful to every single person who runs a Stan account Twitter. <laughs> like, thank you. Thank you for your service. You know what? If you're watching this or if you're listening to this, I want you to thank your local celebrity Stan account today. OK, thank them. They're the true heroes. Um, okay, but let's get back to the pictures of Ashley Benson and G Easy. They're like, you know, putting groceries in a car. It's like she's wearing sunglasses and a mask. It's uh, they're at a grocery store. It's really not that exciting, but the most exciting part is, I guess, that she's she's moved on from. From her love, Kara, her ex love, I should say. Um, this is great. I love I love the celebrity news cycle during quarantine because you like only find out who's together and who broke up based on like who's quarantining together and who's like grocery shopping together. So they're grocery shopping together, which means they're hooking up. Um, oh, no, they didn't did some good reporting on this. Um, so I'm just kind of going <laughs> to read what they wrote about it. They kind of broke down a timeline of Ashley and Kara and maybe hinted at some like potential alleged cheating stuff. OK, so they wrote and I quote, Ashley was seen out grocery shopping with G Easy. Cara Delevingne and Ashley announced their breakup last week. There's been rumors on certain areas of the Internet that Ashley and G Easy had been quarantining together since early April and were spotted out partying in January while Kara was filming in Prague. Her, his, and his roommate, 
IG stories all matched up in terms of locations and things featured. They, Ashley and g Easy, recently released a bad cover of Radiohead's song Creep. Kara and Ashley were last seen together at the end of March shopping for groceries. This continues the trend of Kara's exes moving on with someone gross, suspiciously quick. Previously, it was St. Vincent and Kristen Stewart. Oh, boy. Ashley Benson. Why'd you have to leave, Kara? I loved you guys together. God damn. All right. Okay, let's move on to a segment of the show that I'm calling Celebrity Real Estate Hell. Oh, I love that graphic so much. It's a picture of Justin Bieber's house covered in flames. (laughs) Shout out to Jack for making that graphic for me. Um, Okay, so first of all, Victoria and David Beckham have bought some real estate in the middle of a pandemic, which, you know, I guess is a trend now. Thanks, Kylie. They bought this Miami penthouse for not one, not two, not three, but $20 million. (laughs) What a steal. Damn, what a good deal. (laughs) Just kidding. I hate this apartment. It's truly so horrible. It's like, it looks like a, a villain's lair. It's like, just all windows and like these futuristic looking like stairs the walls are all curved and weird there's an indoor pool which is like I don't trust indoor pools I don't know why I just don't okay you can pay me to swim in an indoor pool I just you know it's weird it's it's it looks like a corporate like, yes, Yokohama Bunny in the chat says it looks like an airport lounge. And I couldn't agree more. It literally looks like an airport lounge. Like, it looks like, like, it's bad. It's all sleek and, and stupid. It sucks. <laughs> this just $20 million Miami penthouse sucks. Um, anyway, people started to give Victoria Beckham some shit about this because she bought this on the heels of applying for a COVID-19 based loan from the British government to pay her employees from her fashion company because they had to furlough 30 employees. (laughs) Um, Here's a quote from page six, quote, although they are yet to move in, they're already being slammed for reportedly taking out a $12 million bank loan to buy the 11,000 square foot property via their firm, Beckham Brand Limited, as Victoria's struggling fashion business sought up to 185000 in British taxpayer funds amid the pandemic to place 30 staff members on furlough for two months. Following the heightened criticism, the company confirmed on May 1st that they were no longer seeking taxpayer assistance. But despite this, the Beckhams still proceeded with their Lux U.S. Miami bolt hole with their own private elevator and a wraparound terrace. End quote. Okay, so like shady. Like she was like, no, I can't pay my employees. <laughs> like give me a loan. And then she goes and buys the. A- 20 million dollar house uh i guess she went back on it and said never mind never mind (laughs) but she definitely tried to get away with it and like that's so shady all right all right uh we have to talk about this next house for celebrity real estate hell and this was sent to me by anna delvey pay pig one of my favorite viewers out there shout out um this is a tiktok that i guess the papa john's guy uploaded where he shows off his extremely cursed and extremely ugly mcmansion let's watch the video of it right now howdy papa john welcome to my crib oh oh what start off with a clock Eagles go up several thousand feet. They made all the way down and right before they hit the earth, they separate so they don't get hurt or killed. Perfect timing. Eagles mating clock spins four times an hour. Check it out. Okay, off the main foyer is the library. This is where I film uh, a lot of uh, footage 
Uh, this is where I work, write letters. Um, let's, uh, huh. Stay tuned, you gotta keep following. Maybe next time, maybe. Yeah, it's bad. It's like a terrible house. <laughs> um, if you're listening to the podcast version of the show, basically he like has this giant eagle statue. It's like probably like 15 feet tall or something. And it is a clock. Like the wings move based on like what time of day it is. It's 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 maybe the ugliest thing I've ever seen. So... There you go. That house sucks. <laughs> um, all right. Okay. So that's it for celebrity real estate hell. You know what? Let's still talk about Robert Pattinson's GQ article. All right. Let's um look at those quotes that I pulled, Jack. Okay. <laughs> so uh, this is from the article. He basically like takes he takes this journalist on a ride for like days and it's it's a very strange interview he's very like performatively weird in it like I he's doing the thing of like I'm a weird performatively strange male serious actor like you know that's like a whole genre of person in Hollywood so I pulled this quote it says that um he's been eating out of cans and stuff he puts Tabasco inside of a tuna can he's eating like trash basically he's stuck in london right now because he was shooting um batman there so he's been getting like food sent to him but he's also like just eating very strangely i love the part of the interview where he says he refuses to work out they they like left him with some dumbbells and they were like please like keep working out so that you're in good shape but he just said like no i don't want to do that he said that like no one made james dean work out so he's not gonna work out which I actually love. Like, I do think that's cool and brave. And he's a hero for that. Um, here's the part that everyone's talking about online. It's really, really strange. Uh, he pours dry penne into a cereal bowl, covers it with water, and places it into the microwave for eight minutes. He says using penne is already new territory for him. Uh, usually he uses, well... Do you know the pasta that's like like a little like a blob, a sort of squiggly blob? Anyway, so he doesn't know what pasta names are, which is that's charming. That's charming. Anyway, so he microwaves this penne. OK, and then he, I'm just going to read this quote. So he, quote, takes the foil, tin foil, and he begins dumping sugar on top of it. I found after a lot of experimentation that you really need to congeal everything in an enormous amount of sugar and cheese. So after the sugar, he opens his first package of cheese and begins layering slice after slice onto the sugar foil then more sugar quote it really needs a sugar crust then he realizes he's forgotten the outer layer which is supposed to be breadcrumbs but today will be crushed up cornflakes so he lifts the pile of cheese and sugar and crumbles some cornflakes onto the aluminum foil before placing the sugar cheese back on top of it then he adds sauce, which is red. The microwave dings and Pattinson promptly burns himself on the bowl of pasta. He sighs heavily looking at it. No idea if it's cooked or not. He dumps the pasta in anyway. At this point, his spirits have visibly begun to flag. He says, I mean, there's absolutely no chance this is going to work. Absolutely none. <laughs> and then he puts it into the microwave. He puts tin foil. He he basically like searches the kitchen for a microwave and he can't find a microwave. And so he puts in what he sorry, he's searching his kitchen for an oven and it all looks the same to him. So he opens a compartment that he thinks is an oven, but is actually a microwave. Then he puts the tin foil in the microwave and it explodes. So there you go. That's the story of Robert Pattinson using his GQ profile to talk about putting microwave, uh, putting tinfoil in a microwave to make weird sugar pasta. And that's how you know he's a good actor. People don't do stuff like this unless they're a really good actor, I always say. I, I think if you give a normal profile to some media outlet, then you're a bad actor. If you give a weird, bizarre one that's kind of performatively strange, then you're a good actor. That's just how acting works. Um, <laughs> I was reminded of other weird, serious actor 
men who eat weird stuff. Um, first of all, Adam Driver. There's that famous story where he like showed up to acting class with a whole rotisserie chicken and a giant jug of water. Love that. Also, I was reminded of Christian Bale's diet when he was losing all that weight for that one movie. He just ate a can of tuna and an apple every single day. So you're not a serious actor unless you eat something weird. Um, <laughs> and it's good. This is great. We love it. <laughs> Look at the, He did a whole photo shoot with himself inside of his London apartment that the production rented for him. <laughs> so there he is in his like designer clothes, like brooding in a corner. The greasiest hair I've ever seen in my entire life. Like truly... I, you, you know, he dipped his hair in some grease there. Maybe he put his hair in the microwave. I don't know. All right, everybody. Well, that's our show. Thank you so much for tuning in to Hot and Rich. If you want to leave us a positive review on Apple Podcasts, that would be so amazing. If you want to subscribe to this YouTube channel. That would also be amazing because I need like a hundred subscribers in order to have like a URL that isn't just a bunch of random letters. So hey, like and subscribe and tell the show, tell your friends about the show. And if you want links to all of the things I'm talking about, go to hotandrichshow.com. We're going to be back up on Friday at 4 o'clock Pacific time live here on twitch.tv slash hot and rich. Until then, stay hot and stay rich, baby. I'm so